some more with the uh, Louisville Revolution series. I'm uh, thinking about the revolutions that happened historically and um, taking a look at Occupy Louisville, uh, the Occupied movement overall, and uh, specifically with the Louisville flavor. This is Ra Khalid, Egyptian rapper, who uh, singing about one love. This, this song is called One Love. They also sing about revolution, anti Mubarak songs, pretty cool. Okay, so the better revolution uh, between the Velvet Revolution and the Egyptian Revolution, since they're both pe peaceful revolutions, were uh, uh, the um, was the Egyptian Revolution. That's the better one was the Egyptian Revolution, and the reason why. Um, yeah, well, we can see that's a work in process. The reason why is that because, well, I'm not for sure exactly why, because there was a lot of bloodshed in the Egyptian Revolution, less bloodshed in the Velvet Revolution. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. So, Velvet Revolution, keep them, keep them both in your mind though, when thinking about how, how this uh, will go down in America. The Egyptian Revolution happened on January 25th, 2011, but really it started two, nearly two years prior, when the April 6th Youth Movement. The April 6th Youth Movement, that's the key. The April 6th Youth Movement was working on a labor strike in March 2008, which culminated in the first National Day of Strikes in Egypt. The April 6th Youth Movement also gathered the players that would be important for the Egyptian Revolution, such as the 70,000 young Egyptians who had signed up for their April 6th Youth Movement Facebook group. So Facebook was used for the April 6th Youth Movement. Um, so the, they had a group. There was also a Revolutionary Youth Council and other youth groups which helped the 2011 Egyptian Revolution. So there's a lot of groups on, the, on Facebook, like the Revolutionary Youth Council and the uh, April 6th Youth Movement. So the labor unions were very much integral for the Egyptian Revolution. The Egyptian organizers were struggling to get the general public out in mass numbers, which was the same struggle as the Velvet Revolution and for Occupy Louisville. So on January 18, 2011, Asma Mafau, M-A-H-F-O-U-Z, posted a YouTube video of her saying that she was going out to Tahir Square by herself if she had to because she had seen her friends die and she was ready to put her body on the line. And she challenged the entire Egyptian nation's manhood by saying, if you guys are real men, if you guys are real men, then you'll come out and protect me. And we should be protecting our women. Look what they're doing with Femin. They're letting those women get beat up everywhere they go. You have a right to defend. If you're real men, you'll defend your women. If you're real men, you would defend your women. She's right. The men need to start protecting their women. January 25, 2011 was also the National Day uh, for Police. So that's ironic. The... January 25th, 2011 is the National Day for Police, and it was the same day of the Revolution. So, January 25th, 2011, which will always be known as the Day of Revolution in Egypt. It was both National Day for Police and Revolution Day. So, it's a little bit ironic, but it highlights the hypocrisy with a sharper slice, since they had police brutality and fascism in Egypt. The nation, all at once, on one day, faced its totalitarian fascist dictatorship with Asma Mafau. And they became free. January 25th, 2011 is the day they became free. What day will Louisville become free? Will it happen August, September, October? Three more months. Less than 100 days until the next election. Coming up. And who's on the ballot? Do you know anybody else besides Mitt Romney? Do you know any of your city council people that's on the ballot right now? Do you know any of the state representatives or the senate representatives? If not, why not? Why don't you know? And if you don't like any of the politicians, how come you haven't ran? How come you haven't got in there? Why don't you get yourself some power and you can pass whatever laws you want to pass? You want to change things, then pass the laws. Occupy the seats. Occupy the city council. Occupy the officials, chairs, and the representative positions. Be a leader in your community. After Mubarak had fled, the April 6th youth movement released their demands on February 6, 2011. Number one, Mubarak must immediately resign. Number two, the National Assembly and Senate must be dissolved. Three, a National Salvation Group must be established that includes all public and political personalities, intellectuals, 
and legal experts and representatives of youth groups who call for the demonstrations on January 25th and 28th. This group would form a transitional coalition government for a transitional period. The group would also form a transitional president, presidential council until the next presidential elections. The fucking military just took over and then they're, they're the ones that were taking over the, you know, the elections and the process and all the things that were happening in the government. And that's, that's, uh, that's bullshit because it should have been the revolutionary. So it was kind of a revolution, uh, surface revolution. They just deposed of the dictator, but the military regime was still in place. That's what happened in Egypt. But now you got the elections, and so now you've got Morsi, who's having to butt heads with Scaff in order to make sure that he gets the powers that he was due in the very beginning. He reconvened Parliament, and they didn't do shit about it. Good for them. There would have been a bloodbath if they tried to do anything there. So the Morsi has the power of the people on his side. Now it just depends if Morsi's a good person. Will he stay uncorrupted? Typically, politicians are corrupt as fuck. Um, but the, since the people are there keeping him honest, perhaps he he might actually uh, he might be forced to be honest. Okay. So there are six demands by the April 6th movement uh, on February 6, 2011. So January 25th happens, and then. Uh, 12 days later, 12 days later, they issue their six demands. Mubarak must fucking go. Get the fuck out, Mubarak. You're leaving. So just like a Mayor Fisher. Get the fuck out, Mayor Fisher. You don't give a fuck about the 99%. You're out. Get the fuck out. Number two, the National Assembly and Senate must be dissolved. No more city council. We don't need the city council. We're going to have a national government, a national council, and we're going to elect brand new people. This government does not represent me at all. I try to speak there about the turnout rate, and there's this white, this well, whatever, this poor um, um, white trash person who is telling me that it's the people's fault. The people are stupid enough to not vote, then fuck them. And that kind of pissed me off, really, to be honest with you. I did not want to go back to a building that hires some fucking piece of shit asshole like that that's going to stop me from speaking up about something I believe in, uh, about the turnout rate. Um, and it's a good thing we should be focused on. There's no fucking democracy. Those people in city council in Louisville Metro, they have no democratic legitimacy. Nobody in Frankfurt's got uh, democratic legitimacy. You motherfuckers were not elected by the majority. The majority didn't even fucking go out to the polls because they didn't even like you. They didn't even try to vote for you all. So we know you only give a fuck about 6% of us. The rest of us, you don't give a shit about. You don't give a fuck about the 94%. 94% of Kentuckians are fucked. They ain't voting, so if they ain't voting, then the politicians don't have to do anything that the citizens ask for, and that's that's partially the, the, the citizens to be blamed for that, but the education system, they don't want us to actually be educated and see how we've been getting fucked, so they don't tell us the truth in the education system. They're actually, it's a slaughterhouse in the education. They make us sit down, shut up, and be obedient sheeple, so we get used to the cheap labor that the corporations are going to want when we get out. They want us to work at McDonald's. They want us to bow down to the dictator, to the boss. And to kiss his fucking ass. That's what they want us to do. They don't want us to organize and have solidarity with our fellow working people and to actually give a damn about one another. They want us competing. They want us separated us. They want us just to give a fuck about the greed. They don't want solidarity. They don't want unity. They don't want us to be together. They don't want democracy. They don't want us to be educated. This is by design. The politicians, the old guard, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about me. They don't give a fuck about education, health care. They don't care about you all. And they care about our friends. So, uh, have a national salvation group, which saves um, some folks in order to establish the elections. You have a new constitution must be written to guarantee the principles of freedom and social justice. I don't know if they got a new constitution or not. Our constitution is 1891. I like the revolution uh, 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 section in it. And I like the, or actually, I like the original version. The original version seems okay, but there's been so many legislation that's been passed over that, that invalidates the Constitution. Let's go back to the, let's go back to the Constitution. Let's invalidate all the legislation laws, and let's just go back to the original document, Kentucky and America's, Kentucky Resolutions, Thomas Jefferson, who's got more power, the state or the federal government? Does our Constitution trump America's? Can we secede? out of Obama's America if we wanted to? Could Brashear say, fuck America, we're our own nation now, nobody else, everybody else get out, this is our fucking gold, take over the fucking gold of Fort Knox, declare martial law, have the National Guard, um, you know, released and, and put out there, take, 
take and just uh, make sure that the, the federal troops don't come in and invade our, our sovereign territory. I believe when it comes down to it, the sheriff of each county is the one that controls that land. If they don't want you there, you got to go. So if the sheriff says, get the fuck out, you got to go. you got to get out. doesn't matter if you're a federal agent or not. doesn't matter if you're DEA. doesn't matter if you're Ohioan. doesn't matter. Sheriff ru runs, rules the roost. Um, so a new constitution, that, that would be a good idea, I think. A constitutional convention probably would get out of hand and a little uh, crazy, but it would make us rethink about what our values are and what we think are important in society. And every generation has to win their new freedoms. I had uh, Louisville, uh, 52 freedoms, uh, UofL, that I introduced at the SGA. It's all symbolic. Fuck SGA. They're just a bunch of fucking rich kids, and they're fucking dicks. <laughs> they're fucking dick rich kids. So I'm the only fucking student that went to their stupid fucking meetings, the only one that gave a shit about what they were fucking doing. So I'm the only one that made what they were doing real, right? It made it fucking real. And they did a couple of things. They kept the sack from being sold out from underneath them, they, you know, gain a control of that, uh, but they voted against gay marriage, they voted against 52 freedoms, so, like, freedom to uh, not be tortured, they voted against that, that's what the fuck UofL SGA voted for, Travis Galt, that motherfucker, Mary Mudd, and all that little clique, those fucking old guard, fucking racist, fucking, you know, they making their money, they're part of the establishment, why are they, they're eating right out of fucking Farrah Ramsey's hands, why are they going to stand up for gay people, or gay rights, or black people, or anybody that's struggling, or anybody that's poor, they don't recognize anybody that's poor, they recognize themselves as part of the oppressor class, they're the ones that are... Uh, um, doling out the money and taking the money and they're oppressing everybody else. They ain't teaching us education. They ain't liberating us. They ain't no real education. And they're anti-democracy. They wouldn't know what the fuck democracy is if it smacked them in the mouth. Even the professor of democracy didn't know shit. Professor of democracy was glad he was a dictator at UofL. He was proud of his dictatorship. And he's a democracy professor. Hey, democracy professor, let's, uh, let's make a decision. Let's, all of us, Say, hey, let's figure out a problem we would like to fix, talk about it, discuss it, and then fix that issue. Once we fix that issue, then we've actually have seen democracy in action. But frankly, because we all kept our fucking mouths shut and we sat down and shut up, I saw exactly what the fuck democracy is. You get one fucking dictator that says, here's what democracy is, and everybody goes along with that fucking asshole. No, that's not what the fuck democracy is. Democracy has room for your opinion. They're going to sit down, they're going to talk about any of the issues that you're faced with, and we're going to work it out and try to work out a compromise uh, solution that we all are happy with. Consensus. Uh, pure democracy says we don't just vote for our representatives, we vote for every issue. Every issue that's come that comes up. Do you want to go to war? What do you want? The people? No. We can actually put that online. Whoever creates the democratic software to be able to vote for a direct democracy here in Louisville, we could, we could just like Kara, you know, we could start the actual process and spearhead the debate. Kentucky can be a leader in this, uh, in democracy. Have a direct democracy website. It would make a ton of money and it would be good for our country. We would be voting on all the issues instead of voting our power away to these fucking representative assholes that don't give a shit about us to begin with. At least the 94% of us they don't give a shit about. Because the uh, turnout rate is 12%. So they only care about the people that got them elected, which only been majority of the 12%. So the majority would have been 6 to 7%. Those are the base. The 6 or 7% of the people are voting for these fucking assholes. They're getting what they want out of this deal. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But they're voting for those people that go in there and nobody else is getting anything else they want to get. So some people understand democracy. Seems like the only fuckers that give a fuck or understand democracy are the only ones that are voting. All the rest of the people are just fucking ignorant and backwards and ain't trying to do shit. They don't know civics. I mean, I don't, I don't blame you people, but you need to fucking read a book. It's uh, called Google, you know. It's called Wikipedia. You can, you can learn a lot of shit off this thing. You can learn that also the other two things that the Tahir Square, the April 6th youth movement in Egypt called for, those responsible for the killing of the hundreds of martyrs in Tahir Square must be prosecuted. They wanted prosecutions of the martyrs. And the detainees who were captured needed to be released immediately. So if you had people, our people, in prisons, locked up in jail, they need to be released. It's a people's revolution, and it's a peaceful people's revolution. The only fuckers that'll get violent would be the police or the tea partiers 
or the saboteurs, the police people in plain clothes who are trying to initiate a riot to fuck us all over. Don't go violent, Louisville. Peaceful demonstrations. Prolong peaceful demonstrations. Out in the street. All of us. It'd be beautiful. Revolt, Louisville.